there's another side, there's many sides to the psychedelic world. Yeah. And one side that I know is a particular interest of yours is the microdosing side of psychedelics. Yeah. And microdosing is where you take a subperceptual dose of yeah. psychedelics. Now, yeah. people have different attitudes about this. So my first yeah. question would be, what are the dominant attitudes that you see arising in the culture about the use of microdosing different yeah. psychedelics? Yeah, so uh, one thing is that uh, you can't inspire uh, the usual population uh, doing that. Uh, because it's still an illegal scheduled substance. Absolutely. Uh, there, are, there might be s some risks induced yep. and uh, people are, will be skeptical anyway. So we are talking about the uh, uh, psychedelic user population, which is already using these uh, kind of things. And uh, I think um, there are a lot of aspects about that. One is, uh, or one major aspect is that you can take a psychedelic on a more regular basis mm -hmm. without having all these irritating, distracting effects. And so therefore a lot, lot of people think, oh, I can do LSD without getting uh, the risk of being fragmented or getting on a horror trip or, or getting a mystical experience. You know, it's a kind of risk minimization in the, uh, understanding of the people. That's one aspect. Uh, another aspect is that these substances might do something to the human organism which might be good uh, even if we don't dose them so much that we have these psychological uh, alterations. That this, it, from a pharmacological point, and I'm a pharmacologist too, um, uh, this might be possible, but this is, there's up to now no reliable ab evidence to my eyes that it is really the case. This is not uh, that all the reports are not true, but they are still anecdotal, might have been placebo induced, and so on. So we still don't know exactly from a scientific point of view if this is really a method which can uh, alter whatever kind of thing uh, like uh, creativity, creative thinking, uh, stuff like that. What we know is you can't alter creative thinking or your thoughts or your thought patterns if you are not doing a dose which is altering your thought patterns. If you use a dose which is sub-perceptual, it means you can't detect it and so you can't detect changes in your thoughts. So this is beyond the definition. What I would like to introduce here is um, that uh, uh, when I have written the recent book, which I have written about my, as a science of microdosing, is that what it's called? Uh, I came across a, a kind of 50 studies in the past which have been done with very low doses. Nobody knows about that. The whole internet is free of that. There is wow. no knowledge and this is how the internet can generate illusions because the people don't look at the past anymore. They are just in the now, mm. which is mindful, but maybe idiotic in another sense Absolutely. that they ignore the past and they don't know about. And what we know from these early studies is that above 20 micrograms, you get a certain kind of effect, which might in some rare cases in uh, behave in a way that people might become a little more creative but I would bet that because of individual sensitivities about the substance even if we would dose them with an uh, quality known and purity known stuff and could give everybody 20 micrograms or let's say 30 or something yes. uh, they uh, would still have completely different reactions somewhat and so therefore it's very hard to dose in the realm what I call above 20 micrograms where you get some kind of effect. Uh, I would like to call that mini dosing coming from 20 to 50 and uh, a lot of the people which have microdosed in the past, for example, Albert Hofmann, the discoverer of LSD, yes. has done in a more or less erratic fashion, let's say five to seven times a year at maximum, uh, he did 30 to 90 mi micrograms. And that is quite a different deal. Yes, I mean, totally. the, then you have some effects. It's not a full-blown experience. Yes. We know from recent research that the full-blown LSD experience uh, uh, needs 200 micrograms. Then you have the full-blown effects. If you go lower, you have less effects. It's not a bad thing. It might be even good, but we still have to define where, what micro-dosing in that sense is. Yes, it's really tough, isn't it? I mean, um, it's tough to get a grip on 
what the full LSD experience would really be? I mean, do you mean to refer to the peak breakthrough mystical experience? It's no, vague no, in a no, way. No, no, uh, no. It's, it's just that we know from the questionnaire profiles yes. and from clinical experience that you don't get much more if you get a higher dose and you get somewhat less if you take a lower dose. Mm. So we know that uh, all the responses on these questionnaires, they got maximum activated when you have that kind of dose and you got much less if you get lower doses. Okay. So, but that doesn't mean, uh, like with a car, you can run 200 miles, let's say with a uh, sports car, but you usually run 50. Mm. Right, and so f the f speed of 50 is much more usable for you in the average day mm -hmm. than running 200. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Uh, so it doesn't mean yes. that 100 micrograms, uh, for example, can do a lot in respect of psychotherapeutic processing, uh, which might you, uh, which might be not as optimal with a full dose. Yes. And so therefore, I'm not discriminating lower dosages or something. Like yes. That. No. Absolutely. I mean, it's it. One thing for me that that I that I am not quite seeing as much in conversation about psychedelics is really what the fundamental aim is, whether whether it's for an individual's life or a collective. Now people are talking.